Welcome to the We Can Fix Climate Change podcast, a show dedicated to exploring real solutions for combating climate change and taking actionable steps towards a better, sustainable future. Join us as we dive deep into the topic and discover how we can make a difference. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. In today's episode, we'll cover the USDA's approval of the sale of lab-grown chicken meat, media's ignorance of the environmental impact of the beef, meat and dairy industries, Global Development Bank's adoption of rules aligned with the Paris Agreement and right-to-charge laws enabling EV charging stations in multi-unit dwellings. We'll also touch on exposés on fake pizza panic, the urgent need to save 79% of plants for UN climate goals, and the chaos caused by global heat waves. Guess what? Lab-grown meat is now officially on the menu in the United States. The United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, has given the green light for two companies to sell their lab-grown chicken meat. Exciting stuff, right? Let's meet the lucky companies that snagged the approval. First up, we have San Francisco's very own Eat Just. You might already be familiar with them because of their popular Just Egg bottles. And then we have Upside Foods, hailing from Berkeley, California. These companies are using a bioreactor to grow chicken meat from animal cells, bypassing the whole raising and slaughtering process. This approval is a huge deal for the lab-grown meat industry, which is still in the early stages. Many people see it as a potential solution to the numerous environmental and ethical challenges we face with traditional animal agriculture. Why is that? Well, lab-grown meat production requires a lot less land and water compared to conventional meat production. Plus, it generates way fewer greenhouse gas emissions. So, with this milestone achievement, we're one step closer to a more sustainable and ethical way of enjoying meat. Soon, lab-grown meat might just become the norm on our dinner plates. Are you ready for that? In a recent post published by Vox, they point out a concerning trend when it comes to the media's coverage of climate change. Apparently, there's a glaring oversight in the way climate change and meat consumption are connected. While it's widely known that the beef, meat and dairy industries have a substantial impact on greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation, this crucial link is often ignored. The article argues that there are several reasons for this omission. Firstly, powerful agricultural lobbies exert significant influence, shaping the narrative and downplaying the connection between animal agriculture and climate change. Secondly, the issue itself is quite complex making it challenging for media outlets to effectively communicate the intricacies involved. Lastly, there seems to be a tendency to focus on individual actions rather than emphasising the need for broader systemic change. The author of the post suggests that it's high time for media outlets to prioritise reporting on the environmental consequences of animal agriculture. By doing so, they can raise awareness about the impact of meat consumption and encourage more sustainable food choices among the public. It's crucial for us to acknowledge the undeniable connection between climate change and the meat industry. By shining a light on this issue, the media can drive real change and contribute to a more sustainable future. Next, an article called Public Banks Agree to Check Investments Against Countries' Climate Plans from Climate Home News. It seems like some global development banks are trying to get their act together when it comes to the goals of the Paris Agreement. They've just rolled out some new rules, courtesy of the International Development Finance Club, IDFC, that call for member banks to disclose their greenhouse gas emissions and define targets for reducing them. But here's the thing, experts aren't exactly thrilled about it. They're expressing disappointment, arguing that these rules are pretty underwhelming. They say they lack ambition and don't address the sense of urgency surrounding the climate crisis. Critics are pointing out that these rules don't go far enough in making sure development banks prioritize sustainable and low-carbon investments. They're also shining a light on the need for stronger accountability measures and more concrete actions if we want to achieve the targets set out in the Paris Agreement. It's clear that there's still a lot of work to be done in this area. We need bolder steps, greater commitment, and more innovative strategies to combat climate change. Otherwise, it's going to be tough to meet our climate goals. For the official announcement direct from the World Bank, read the invitingly titled 
Joint MDB Methodological Principles for Assessment of Paris Agreement Alignment of New Operations. That's a mouthful. On the topic of electric vehicles, there was an encouraging article from The Conversation called Right to Charge Laws Bring the Promise of EVs to Apartments, Condos and Rentals. It dives into how the adoption of electric vehicles has been held back by a lack of charging infrastructure in places like apartment buildings and condos. But guess what? There's some good news. Several states in the US are now implementing right to charge laws. These laws make it likelier for tenants to get EV charging stations in their parking spaces. The whole purpose of these laws is to make EV ownership more accessible and convenient for folks living in multi-unit dwellings. By providing a legal framework for tenants to request and install charging infrastructure, these laws tackle the barriers that have been stopping people from going electric in places like apartments and condos. And the implications are pretty exciting. This development is expected to speed up the transition to electric transportation and make a positive impact on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So not only are these laws helping people go electric, but they're also benefiting the environment. Hey there, let's dive right into some interesting news stories making waves this last week. First up, we have an intriguing post published by Heated, which highlights how even mainstream news outlets are causing fake pizza panic. It's fascinating to see how the media's portrayal of certain events can sometimes stir unnecessary fear and panic among the public. It definitely makes you question the reliability of certain news sources. Next, we have an alarming report from EcoWatch stating that a recent study showed 79% of the remaining plants on Earth need to be saved in order to meet the UN's climate goals. This is a huge wake-up call for our planet's biodiversity. It reminds us of the urgent need to take action and protect our precious ecosystems. Lastly, The Guardian's Tuesday briefing shed light on the chaos caused by record-breaking heat waves across the globe. From America to India, these heat waves are wreaking havoc. And it's not even July yet. It serves as a stark reminder of the real and immediate impacts of climate change. It's crucial for us to collectively address this issue and work towards sustainable solutions to mitigate further damage. These news stories truly demonstrate the importance of being informed about the world around us. For more information on these stories and the sources cited in this podcast, be sure to visit our weekly Substack newsletter. Links are in the description. On today's episode, we covered a range of topics, including the USDA's approval of lab-grown chicken meat and the media's omission of the meat and dairy industry's impact on climate change. We also discussed global development banks adopting rules to align with the Paris Agreement, the benefits of right-to-charge laws for EV charging stations, and the latest climate news from Heated, EcoWatch, and The Guardian. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I'll see you at the next one, and don't forget to subscribe.